Hello everybody, my name is Tasman May, welcome back to my channel Two Books and Tasman, and as usual, I'm reading about 73 books at the same time. I've recently discovered that I quite enjoy ebooks, which is purely baffling. I've had a Kindle since I was 12, I think I was gifted it, and I finally used it. Right, let's just get on into it, shall we? Um, at this point in March, which is, it is now the 7th. Um, March? I wish. <laughs> Um, in June, it is the 7th of June, I am currently in the middle of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15, 15 books. Whoopsies! So, okay, the few that I'm not going to talk about in this video because I haven't touched them since my last currently reading video, they are A Close and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers, The Other Boleyn Girl by Philippa Gregory, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by J.K. Rowling, The Odyssey by Homer. Yes, they're the ones that I haven't touched. They're kind of like ongoing projects that aren't really ongoing, they're just on pause. <laughs> I also was 40% through As I Descend by Robin Talley. I haven't got to a point where I'm like, I'm not gonna pick it up again, I'm gonna DNF it. But I haven't picked it up in a very long time. Probably March was the last time I picked it up. I was drawn to it because it is a retail, no, it's inspired by Macbeth, which big fat Shakespeare nerd right here. But the characters, I just didn't give a shit about any of them and I wanted to punch them all in the face. It's just, there's just too much teenage angst. I'm really outgrowing young adult and I'm so upset by that because I have so many young adult books that I'm yet to read. But honestly, I just can't deal with them. These teenagers these days. <laughs> I might continue with it. I don't know. We'll see. It's a kind of like mystery thriller horror with paranormal stuff and lots of queer rap and also disability rap. The main character has um, something wrong with her leg. I can't remember what it is. And she permanently has to use crutches. That's nothing to do with the plot. It's just a thing, so I like that. And the queer rap is mwah. There's a female-female relationship, there's a male-male relationship, set in a boarding school. I've kind of been bashing it, but if teenage angst doesn't bother you, then maybe give it a go. It might be more for you than it was for me. Oh, there's a bunch here that I also haven't touched in a while. Um, Pages and Co. Book 2, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. I really love book one. I got 18% through book two and it just wasn't doing it for me. The first book I read in like two sittings and I blasted through it, whereas this one I just don't care at the moment. The bit where we're at now is in, I would call it the equivalent of the Ministry of Magic, where you know that magical things can happen, but it feels so clinical and government-like that it just doesn't feel heartwarming in the way that it does when we're at the magical bookshop. I will continue reading this at some point. This one I will not DNF. I will continue at some point and just push through the kind of like ministry section and get back to the magical bookshop and then we're gonna go wandering through fairy tales and it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. I've heard from people that have finished it that it isn't as good as the first one but it's still really really good particularly when you get into the magical fairy tales so that's a promising fact. I also have more about Paddington which is book two in the Paddington series by Michael Bond. I'm listening to this on script as an audiobook. I got the first book on Order bubble, and then I realised they were free on script, so now I'm listening to them on script. I listened to the first one and 55% of this one towards the beginning of lockdown, I think. No, that's a lie. About a month ago, and it was just really soothing and really nostalgic, and it makes me think of my dad, Paddington. I always relate with my dad, so that was a really lovely heart thing that made me cry. <laughs> also, they're really, really funny. Like, there were so many things that genuinely made me laugh out loud. Another book is The Queen of Eoflaria, book one in the Tales of Inthia series by F.E. Calvin. I'm 30% through this. This is an ebook. My lovely friend Jean from Jean Bookish Thoughts has recommended this on countless occasions. It's written in a very typically YA style, which when I spoke to her about it, she was like, oh, I found that really comforting and like cute. Whereas it's annoying me more than anything. But it's a fantasy set in a world where there isn't any judgment about sexual orientation. The princess that we follow is meant to be marrying a prince, but when he tragically dies, she then marries the younger sister for like political alliances. And it's about her relationship with the sister, then I guess eventually falling in love, but it's very much like a, the sister is an awful child that's wayward and she's gone off the rails. Whereas the princess from the other land is like perfect and everything that a monarch should be. So it's very, very cheesy, but it's a novella as well. So super, super sure I will be carrying on with this primarily because Jean loves it. 
If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you will know that I am the worst host in the world to any book club that has ever existed, and um, I haven't completed a single book that my book club on Instagram has read ever. One of those books is the fifth season, book one in the Broken Earth series by N.K. Jemisin. I'm apparently 5% through this, according to Goodreads. That was last month's book for my book club, um, and I'm trash. Like most cases of my book club, I am enjoying it. I say that, like I've read a chapter, I like it. But my book club, which I run with two friends who actually read the book. So if you're interested, then check out my Instagram for what we're going to be reading in the future and stuff. And um, I'll add you to group chats and blah, blah, blah. Danny and Kirsten actually follow through and actually host discussions and stuff. And I just kind of go, you guys are awesome. Yeah. This is something that I've been meaning to pick up for an eon. So I was hoping having it as a book club pick would make me want to pick it up more. And I'd be like, yeah, finally. But actually... If I'm told, even if I tell myself I have to read a certain book, I don't. It makes me want to not read it. That's why I'm so bad at TBRs and yet I keep setting them. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't really give a plot for this because I'm so early on in the series. It's set in a fantasy land where there are queer characters. There's a lot of people of color. The author is black and you can tell from, they're never like explicitly stated what ethnicities or like colors they are because it's a fantasy world. So it wouldn't necessarily be like they're of African descent, they're of Asian descent because fantasy world. But the way that they describe um, kind of shades of skin colour and styles of hair, you can kind of tell, oh, that person has dreadlocks, that person has dark skin, that person is lighter. It's told to you in a nuanced way, if that makes sense, which is really, really clever. I also really love the writing style. Okay, now we're getting into books that I've actually picked up recently. The next one is Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. I was so excited to read this. I'm 60% through. Oh no, not even that, I'm 50% through. And I'm really not enjoying it, guys. I'm so upset. It's like had a lot of critical acclaim but then a lot of people that I knew either in real life or through the internet were like yeah it's all right and yeah I still went into it with incredibly high expectations and it's just not living up to them the story is just of a young woman a young black woman living in London and kind of like about her life I just don't like her as a person and her friends as well I hate all the characters <laughs> they're just bad people well no they're not all bad people but um, they're annoying and they behave in a way that I would expect a 12 year old to behave and still be like, you shouldn't behave like that because we need to be better. And they're like in their mid to late twenties and they're behaving like this. And I'm like, oh my God, are you in year seven? Come on. I've realized that if characters are the kind of people that I would avoid in real life, I don't like reading about them, which I think makes sense. And unfortunately, Queenie and her friends aren't the kind of people that I would like in real life, which is disappointing, but I'm going to continue reading it because I've heard that it gets better in the second half. Oh, something I haven't mentioned yet. It's all about sex, which I wasn't expecting at all. Now, sex in books, sex in films, sex in everything, love sex, yes. I hope you're all having great sex. This is just about a woman who's going through a break which is a breakup, but she's not aware of it yet. And is sleeping around a lot. And that's it. Like, there are maybe, in the 50% that I've read, maybe like 10 pages dealt with anything that I found vaguely interesting, like to do with relationships with her family. Um, the, the stuff about her mum I'm interested in. Um, I hope they go into that more later on, but it's just pages and pages and pages and pages and pages about sex and men and I just I don't care. Like I said, it's the kind of conversation that I would avoid in real life. People that talk about that kind of stuff in the way that these characters do, I'm just not interested in. I don't care about it, so I don't want to read it. It does have amazing representation and it is good that we are getting a book about a black woman without it being about her blackness. That is so important. Like I mentioned in a recent video, I'm listening to Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This is a reread for me. I'm listening to the audiobook for the first time though and mwah, amazing, perfect, yes. Still gonna be a five stars, still sits confidently on my favourite shelf on Goodreads. I love it so, so much. Also, representation for this, I would say disability rep, because either Eleanor is on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum, or she has immense PTSD that has affected the way that she communicates with people in everyday life from a childhood trauma. 
Um, it, nothing is specified, there are no labels or anything put on it, um, but it has really positive counselling rep later on, trigger warnings for themes of suicide. Yes, incredible, love it, absolutely perfect, amazing. And the audiobook's very, very good as well. It's set in Scotland, which I didn't realise reading it until like a bit of the way through. And the author, nope, and the narrator is Scottish and she manages to do different voices for all of the characters and different varying like intensities of the accent and mwah. Beautiful. I'm doing a chef's kiss a lot at the moment and I do not know what's happening to me. Last month I read my first Sherlock Holmes book and this month I'm reading my second Sherlock Holmes book and that is The Sign of Four which is the second of the novels. Now I'm getting them in the Penguin English Library Classics editions. I have all of them now. Book haul incoming. <laughs> And there are a lot of short story collections and I don't know the order in which the short stories come in amongst the novels so that's something really fun that I'm gonna have to figure out myself. I gave the first book three stars and I feel like this one's also gonna be three stars. I'm definitely gonna read them all because they're Sherlock Holmes and I really like BBC's Sherlock. I really like CBS's Elementary. That's the show that I'm marathoning at the moment. Mm, it's so good. And I'd really like in the future to do a video talking about the books and the adaptations I've seen and the different interpretations of the characters. For example, Lestrade in Sherlock and in Elementary are completely different people. But reading the book, I can see where you would take either extreme from different little sprinklings in his personality in the books. It's just, I find it fascinating. We're down to the final three guys, but I'm actually reading ATM. The next one is Unnatural Causes by Dr. Richard Shepard. This is a memoir by Dr. Richard Shepard, who is a forensic pathologist. He's one of the top in the UK, and he basically deals with autopsies and post-mortems, I think that actually means the same thing, oops, of crime investigations. So sometimes, for example, one of the first bits that he's spoken about was about a shooting in the UK, which happened long before I was born, so I'd never heard of it, the Hungerford Massacre, and the shooter killed himself at the end as well. So he does deal with the victims and basically anyone caught in a crime that is dead. <laughs> Something that I've noticed is I recently had to DNF two books that I will hopefully come back to later, but because they're to do with grief and the loss of, in one instance, a father, in another instance, a brother. For those of you that don't know, my brother was killed, coming on three years ago now, and those books were too much for me. I couldn't deal with them because the way that it talked about grief was too real. Whereas this, even though it is all about death, it's from the investigative side and I'm so interested and it's very much because of watching Elementary that I wanted to pick this up. So thank you. As some of you may know, there are a bunch of ebooks at the moment that are to do with police brutality and policing in the US that are for free. I will link all of the description things in the links. And this one is Who Do You Serve? Who Do You Protect? It's an anthology created by Truthout. I am 25% of the way through this. This is really, really good in all of like the heart-wrenching, like what the fuck ways. Each section is written by a different person. And the first section I didn't like, and I was like, oh no, I really wanted to like this. But that was just the, the writing because then the next two bits that I've read so far have been much more what I was wanting from it. I'm really glad that I know more about specific events now so that when my racist uncles come a calling, I can be like, BAM BITCH. And the final book that I'm gonna talk about today is Fairy Tales by Burley Doherty. I was slumping the other day and I wanted some fairy tales to pick up because I recently read Aesop's Fables and it was incredible and I flew through it and I just wanted something else like that. And this is a collection that I believe I got for my sixth birthday. It, there's an inscription in the front for my friend Danny. And something that I find really sweet is that I went through a phase where I got rid of a whole bunch of children's books because I felt like I was too grown up for them. But I clung on to this. Jane Ray is the illustrator and I think it's just because I relate this collection to my childhood but she's one of my favourite illustrators, it makes me feel incredibly nostalgic. I want to get one of her drawings as a tattoo at some point and also when I was super nostalgic about a year ago I went and bought a whole bunch of her other books, not that I'd read any of them, I was purely getting them for nostalgia because the art felt so familiar and I just adore her. And that is all of them, yes, we are here very good. Thank you for watching from Mickey and me. All of my links are down below and my Patreon and other fun things. So thank you for watching.
Love you. Stay sexy.